Lieutenant Commander Kyla Van Zyl contacts us to deliver the latest deployment for the USS Armager. We are to patrol several systems along Delta Alliance affiliated systems and look for signs of the Vardwar. Fresh off the tail of failed negotiations with the Vardwar leader, Gaul, the Alliance of Starfleet, the Klingon Defence Force and the Romulan Republic have switched up their operations from exploratory to defensive. The Vardwar's insistence that they should be the sole power of this region is a wrench in the plans we had to unite the newly accessible Delta Quadrant in our efforts to prepare for the Iconians' return, though I suspect their hand may be felt in the rapid resurgence of the Vardwar threat. Our first stop along our patrol route is the system Nular. It houses a single M-Class world that has seen multiple colony attempts in the past, but none being permanent. There have been Vardwar sightings in the area, and it looks like we're not alone. Good to see you. Let's get to work. The Malon once used this system as a dump site. However, the radiation levels have been dropping. We investigated and found that the Vaudoir had chased the Malon away. Our intelligence indicates the Vaudoir are expecting us to deploy surveillance beacons into the area, which is why we have done just that. I'm sorry. Go on. We've learned they plan to ambush us when we retrieve the data from the beacons. When that happens, they'll go from hunter to prey. The beacons are now, in essence, Vodwar bait. So you're going to ambush the ambushers? I see. We will counterattack the Vodwar, disable one of their ships, and recover the intel data from their systems. We will then analyze the data to determine their recent movements and objectives. It seems the sub-commander Sahan thinks that the data gathered by the beacons is probably compromised, but the real prize would be the Vardwar ships themselves, whose data banks we can scour. So what's your plan? We want to locate one of their main bases. So far, we've had little luck in finding where they hole up when they're not on the attack. This should change that. Time's a factor here. Let's get to work and scan the beacons. We wouldn't want to disappoint the Vardwar, now would we? Then let's go hunting. Subcommander Rai Sahan works in the Republic Intelligence as a Class 6 analyst, so the sensors that have been deployed some time ago by the Republic have been observed by the Vardwar, and now they're lying in wait for us to retrieve the gathered data. Unfortunately for them, the Romulans saw the Vardwar's ploy, and are now set to play the players who are ready to play them. Wait. Yeah, no, that, that is right. The three DLN warbirds fall in behind the armagers who set course for the first beacon in geostationary orbit above a small moon, and I can't help but wonder why we weren't briefed on the presence of the Romanian Republic before our mission began. The minute we ping the reconnaissance beacon... Coming here was foolish! Now suffer the fate of all fools! It begins the data transfer, and its activation is detected. Several Vardwar assault ships warp in and open fire. The ship is disabled. Time to acquire their data. With the initial response vessel disabled, we begin scanning its data banks for what it knows. We have the data. And company. Then the rest of the Vardwar squadron shows up, and as usual, their vessels are dangerously powerful for an unprepared ship, and were it just the Armager, or a long-range alliance scout ship come to retrieve their beacons, then the Vardwar ambush would have been a success. As it is, the scales are weighted quite heavily in our favour. As the final ship is disabled, Subcommander Sahan contacts us. The legendary Vardwar Paranormal. We should expect heightened resistance as we move forward. Did you find what you were after? Initial analysis of the data we acquired from them isn't turning up much. I'm afraid we caught a small fish this time. Let's continue, shall we? I look forward to seeing what swims up to nibble at our bait next time. Now, call me crazy, but I think Sub Commander Sir Hen likes fishing. Unfortunately, the information we salvaged from this vessel hints at nothing major, and we may have to trigger the rest of the ambushes. Wherever the Vardwar are hiding, obviously they cannot get a clear picture of our forces, or they'd send more ships. I wonder how many times we can try this before they cotton on to the ploy. You're not leaving here alive! The second group disabled, we begin our scan once again. Another successful day at the pond. Let's see what secrets our latest catch has to share with us. Well, this vessel is a bit more promising. Ah. Our 
starfish has swum through many waters indeed. I think we have something here. The ship's been to a couple of systems often. One system comes up more than the other. That's probably where their base is, but we need to be sure. I'm afraid we need to do some more fishing. With that tantalising piece of information, we make the call to go again. So far, the forces haven't been anything excessive, so we're probably safe to continue. Leaving the wreck of our making behind, we move on to the next beacon. Fire at will! Destroy the Emperor! The last vessel set adrift, we return to invade its data core. Destroy it! Open fire! All weapons! Ah! That appears to be a rather sizable ring of interdictor assaults and scout ships. This skirmish is a little more heated than our previous ones, and a clear sign that we may be pushing our luck. We manage to escape the Vardwar tether anchors that snare us and form up with the Romulan wing. Oh boy, that's a lot of explosions. Each one of these blue detonations is enough to take down our shielding. We're at a direct hit, so some deft manoeuvring is required here, as this is one storm the armature can't just weather. Well, that was a rather large fleet. How do we do? This Vardwar charged us like a bull, perhaps wondering what happened to their first two wings. It appears the Vardwar aren't amused by our angling efforts. May be wearing out our welcome here. Please tell me your analysts found something. I'm afraid not. This vessel was assigned a patrol in another sector and came in response to a distress beacon. It hasn't been to either of the systems we're looking at as a potential base location. It's risky, but I'm willing to cast my line one more time. Will you join me? Turns out that these were incidental ships then, a squadron passing nearby that caught wind of our presence by detecting a distress transmission, likely from one of the disabled ships we've left behind us. That's disconcerting. If a signal got out, our plans may be scuppered. The last beacon snares an unexpected catch, however. There's no time for formalities. A large Vodwar strike force is en route to this position at high warp. I doubt they're coming to exchange pleasantries. The Republic flagship under the command of Commander Jurok decloaks and hails us. Yes, Commander, we are aware. We're expecting them. Expecting? We'll continue this conversation soon. For the moment, I suggest you prepare for the fight of your life. Acknowledged. Thanks for the assist, by the way. Are you a drink? No? Okay. The RRW Lisette is a toll word, dreadnought. And Lisette means freedom in old Romulan and contradicts the naming conventions of the Imperial Romulan vessels. Our time has passed, that's ironic, coming from the 700 year old Vardwar. The fleet warps in, and this is nothing we haven't seen before, however a heavy artillery vessel also arrives in the system, just behind the faster assault craft. The heavy vessel and the Lasset orbit each other, exchanging bow fire like old galleons of Earth's oceans, the two powerhouses trading blows. Also I died getting this shot, so it's definitely going in the edit. The Lisette takes a beating but strikes something critical in the Vardwar flagship. The vessel tumbles through space before exploding. Negotiations have proven pointless, at least until the Vardwar are willing to talk, or Gaul more specifically. So Jurok is right, there is only one option. We finish off our Vardwar assault vessel that we managed to separate from the main host and then turn back to the fray to see that the Romulans are just mopping up the remaining craft. Now then, let's discuss what's going on here. Judging by the company you're keeping, I guess it involves some unorthodox operations. What mischief has Subcommander Sahan dragged you into? And how can I extract you from it? Oh, me! Mischief! I'd never- Ah, Commander Jarak. Don't cut me off. So glad you could join our little fishing trip today. Our mischief is an operation aimed at discovering the location of a hidden Vodwar base. 
We were hoping to glean that data from one of the Vaudoir ships we lured here. But, as you can see, they were quite indisposed. Permanently so, in point of fact. Oh, I can speak now? So, we've narrowed down the search to two possible systems, concealing a Vardois base of some size. Ships have been coming and going from one of these two locations. I see. Vardois activity in this region is a growing concern. Finding this base is a worthy objective. How can I be of assistance? You could lend the Lassette's formidable firepower to the effort, Commander. I have patrol duties to complete. I was here by coincidence. Very well. We'll set course for the first location on your list. Good hunting, Commander Jarok. Don't mind Commander Jarok. She and I have a personal disagreement from another lifetime. Leave it off the battlefield. Not the cleanest ending to this operation, but Jarok can see what the Vodwar are up to in one system, while I take a look at the other. Well, one of you is bound to find that hidden base. Glad we could assist. Yes. Well, between us, I hope she finds nothing but an old toothless Vodwar merchant selling fat tribbles and fake Tranya. Right. Best of luck with that. I'll take all the luck I can get. Comes in handy in my line of work. Thanks again for your help. Perhaps you and I can go fishing again sometime. Until then, may the elements watch over you. Armager out. So it seems that this operation might not have been as above the board as Subcommander Sahen presented it as, considering Jarok arrived unaware of the ongoing efforts, and my orders didn't mention all this. Still, something seems to have come of it though, and I have to wonder, what was the deal between Sahen and Jarok? Maybe a professional disagreement? Maybe a personal one? None of our business, either way. So we set a course out of the system to continue on our patrols. The second system we stop by is Brothra 2, where a tidally locked planet orbits a class K star. Before exploration efforts were halted in this sector, there's been plans to dispatch a joint Romulan Federation research team to the planet to study its unique ecosystem. I guess that's all on hold for now. I'm Logan Curtis of the Borg Cooperative. My vessel has taken heavy damage in battle and several critical systems are on the verge of failure. Any assistance you can provide will be greatly appreciated. I realize you may not have reason to trust us, but I assure you, we are not your enemy. Assimilation is not our goal. I've heard rumors of the Borg Cooperative. Unlike the Collective, this is a group of drones who have retained their individuality. Admiral Chakotay of Starfleet Intelligence originally encountered their group's founders when he was just a commander in 2373 outside of the Necrit Expanse. Originally a small colony consisting of a single cube's inhabitants, around 80,000 drones, the damaged cube lost its connection to the hive and in time, the individuals found themselves. It seems that over the past 39 years since Voyager was last here, the liberated drones have branched out and used the weakened Borg state to free more trapped mines. Thank you for the aid. The cooperative has tried to seek peace with Species 6339, but to no effect. They do not see that although we are Borg, we are free of the collective's influence and wish no harm to others. Your sphere's pretty banged up. What happened? Species 6339 ambushed us in this system. My vessel was equipped to deal with such a threat, but then the Vodwar happened upon our conflict, and the Vodwar see everyone as a target. They opened fire on all of us. Now there are damaged ships on both sides. We would aid Species 6339 and show them we are not their enemy, but we will need your help. Well, reports suggest the cooperative has been benign. You'll have our aid. We shall follow your lead. It was the Klingons who apparently first re-encountered the cooperative and shared intelligence file 318A with the Delta Alliance. In it, Galera postulated that they posed little threat despite being one of the most advanced local powers in the sector. They lacked much experience in combat and were still few in number. Apparently, other individualized Borg have arisen throughout a variety of circumstances over the years and the cooperative seeks to unify them against the collective. Just gonna pull back the curtain for a sec here. Last time I ran these missions was quite a while ago, and I remember events involving Hugh, 
but this entire chapter seems to have had a little rejigging since then and I don't know where those missions have gone, so if anyone knows, let me know and hopefully I'll be able to fold them back into the storyline once again. We approach the damaged vessel of species 6339 was it? And hail them. Stay away from us! I want nothing to do with Borg collaborators! If you want to help, destroy those drones! If you're not willing to do that, then go and leave us in peace! We will do what must be done! Well, the cooperative seems to be here to help, and if they're not, I am, so let's see if we can work out a truce. Peace? Our species was nearly wiped out by the Borg, and now they seek peace? There is no peace with a drone. The will of the Collective remains in all of them, even if they claim to be free of it. Destroy them, and then we will talk to you about peace. My species was almost wiped out by the Borg too, due to time travel, and it was a liberated former drone captain who saved us all, once free of the Collective. They are individuals once again. Unfortunately, our diplomacy is interrupted. The Bardwar haven't pulled out, it seems. They were still nearby and have returned with reinforcements. Three assault vessels enter the system within weapons range and open fire on the Borg Sphere. I can't believe I'm saying this, but support the Borg Sphere. Fighting alongside the Borg vessel is certainly a first for the Armager, and they are pulling their weight, it seems. The generation systems are operational and the sphere is growing in power with every passing minute. The Vardwar ships are successfully driven off, while species 6339 helplessly watches on. You saved us? You and the cooperative helped us? Perhaps we were wrong. If the cooperative is willing to fight against such odds, the Borg brought my people to the brink of extinction. Now the Vardwar are determined to finish us. If the Cooperative wants to unite against them, then our survival is more important than the past. Yes, yes, you get it. Thank you. That is the message I've been trying to spread. I mean, <clears throat> what's next? We will require your assistance to recover our other ships in the area. Then we can make a stand against the Vaudoir. Agreed. We'll all get through this by working together. We shall follow you to recover our allies. We sweep through the system to find and repair the other disabled Borg and Octanti. That's 6339's species, by the way. The Vaudoir have returned in force and the skirmish is an uphill battle, but one that becomes easier the more ships that we save. The Borg Sphere is managing rather well against these smaller assault craft, holding them in place with its tractor beams, a favourite of all Borg Spheres it seems, and the larger Vardois heavy craft begins salvoing the Sphere, so we switch targets to protect our less manoeuvrable allies. The immediate danger passed, we continue repairing the Borg Cooperative and Octanti vessels. Thank you for the unexpected aid. <laughs> Two more Octanti and another sphere later, we have our strange fleet of three Octanti, two Borg and one Starfleet ship. It's a trap! The Vardwar will be here at any moment! You must retreat! The Cooperative will not leave you defenseless. A sizeable fleet of Vardois arrives and the battle is joined. This, as many skirmishes this week have been, is an even fight so long as the Armager doesn't draw the ire of too many Vardois at once.
set our sights on the final Vardois heavy artillery vessel, grab our balls and octanti, and set about the final confrontation. The powerful spheres can do most of the legwork here as we draw the opening salvo from the Vardois making it safe for our slower allies to approach. We then keep them safe by shooting down any cluster torpedoes aimed at our heavy hitters. of rebuilding the Octanti civilization, we will need allies. And those alliances can only flourish once the Vardwar are defeated. That seems to be how things are, yes. Starfleet and the Cooperative will be willing to aid in this too, after all. I believe we have taken an important step toward a truce with Species 63 with the Octanti. I think we have more in common than we realize. I'm not reading any Vaudoir craft on sensors. We'll handle things from here. Thank you once again for your assistance. The Cooperative will remember your goodwill, and I suspect the Octanti will as well. So, an eventful series of patrols accomplished. We managed to save another species from the Vaudoir, who are expertly using the conflict of other factions to strike at the powers. The Borg Cooperative's inclusion and willingness to help is a beneficial coincidence too. They were an unexpected variable in this war zone, but not an unwelcome one. As for the Octanti, they're hurt, but not unreasonable. They see the threats the Vardwar pose and are willing to work together to oppose them. Good, because the Vardwar are merely the warm-up round. The real threat is yet to come. Thank you for watching this episode of the Star Trek Online story series as we continue to chart the Delta Quadrant, recruit allies and try to form an alliance in the ever-expanding narrative of Star Trek Online. You never know where friends might turn up it seems, and it's a welcome relief when the unexpected is, well, welcome. And I hope to see you next time when we set foot on Kobali Prime to see if there's any truth to Gore's claims. Until then, I've been Rick, thanks again for watching. Goodbye.